Algebra 2 1.8a Theorems to Multiply or Divide Exponents When we multiply numbers that are written in exponential notation that have the same bases, we just add the exponents. So a to the third power times a to the second power is just a to the three plus two. It's a to the fifth power. So here's our first theorem for any non-zero real number a and integers m and n, a to the mth power times a to the nth power equals a to the m plus n. I'm going to add the exponents of the bases of the same. They both have a for a base. Well, sometimes we'll have a positive exponent and a negative exponent, like a to the fifth times a to the negative second. And this is going to equal a to the fifth means a times a times a times a times a. There's five of them, right, multiplied to each other. And this is a fraction, isn't it, because it has a negative exponent. So that's 1 over a times a. Well, if a can be written as an a over 1, if these can all be written as a over 1, then we can use the associative property to regroup these as a times a times a times a over 1 times a over 1 times 1 over a times 1 over a. And we're left with a to the third power because we can see that these are going to cancel each other out, aren't they? This one cancels out with this one, and this one cancels out with this one as an a over an a, right? Which makes a 1. So it's like a 1 times 1. So we're left with a to the third power. So a to the fifth power times a to the negative second is going to equal a to the 5 plus a negative 2. That's going to give us a positive 3. See? We can multiply and simplify if we've got 4 to the 5th power times 4 to the negative 3rd, well, it just means 4 to the 5th plus a negative 3. That's 4 to the 2nd. That's 4 times 4. That's 16. And if we've got, in parentheses, negative 2 to the negative 3rd power times negative 2 in parentheses to the 7th, then these are the bases, aren't they? This negative 2 is a base. It's not the same thing as if the negative was on the outside of the parentheses. So the, everything inside is the base, all right? So that means we have negative 2 to the negative 3 plus 7. We're going to add these. That's going to give us negative 2 to the fourth. So that's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That's going to give us a positive 16. And if we've got... 8x to the 4th y to the negative 2 in parentheses times negative 3x to the negative 3rd y in parentheses. We multiply the coefficients, 8 times negative 3, that's a negative 24. And we've got x to the 4th and x to the negative 3rd. We could subtract those and get x to the 1st, right? Because 4 minus 3 is 1. We have a negative 2 plus a 1 because there's actually a little 1 that's invisible as an exponent next to this y, isn't there? Well, negative 2 plus a 1 is a negative 1. Well, we know that makes a fraction. So that y is a fraction. That's 1y. So our answer is negative 24x over y. See? Because technically this could be written over a 1. And when we multiply them, negative 24x times 1 is negative 24x. And 1 times y is y. See? For this one, we're going to multiply these to these. We multiply the coefficients 4 times 2. That makes an 8. And we can add the a to the 2 to get a plus 2. And we can add the b to this 3 to get b plus 3. And that's as far as we can simplify. It can't be simplified any more than that. That's our answer. See? When we divide numbers written in exponential notation that have the same bases, now remember, they have to have the same bases, okay? This is real important. They've got to have the same bases. We just subtract the exponents. So if we've got, if we've got a to the 6 over a to the 2nd, we just do 6 minus 2, which is 4. We get a to the 4th. So think of it like this. a to the 6th means we're multiplying a to itself 6 times, right? And this is a multiplied to itself twice. So this a cancels out this one, and this one cancels out this one, and we're left with these four a's like over a 1. So it's a to the fourth power. See? It's a multiplied to itself four times. And this is true even if the exponents are negative or zero. So here's our other theorem. 
for any non-zero real number a in integers m and n, if we've got a to the m power divided by a to the n power, then we can just do subtraction, m minus n. We can subtract exponents if the bases are the same. Okay? So we can divide and simplify, and I've got a lot of examples. So if we've got 4 to the 7th power over 4 to the negative 3rd, then we've got 7 minus a negative 3. So it's not just 7 minus 3, it's 7 minus a negative 3, because these are subtraction, okay? And remember, when we subtract a negative, we add the opposite. So it's like 7 plus 3, so we have a 4 to the 10th power. Look at this one. We've got 6 to the negative 4th and 6 to the negative 5th. Well, that's going to be a negative 4th minus a negative 5th. See? So that's going to leave us with 6 to the 1st power. So we have negative 4 plus 5 because we're going to add the opposite. So we have 6 to the 1st power, which is just a 6. Take a look at this one. We've got 9 to the negative 2nd over 9 to the 5th. And... We need to subtract, so we get negative 2 minus 5. That gives us a negative 7, which is a fraction, right? Because we have a negative exponent. So we have 1 over 9 to the 7th. This one's a little more involved. We have to divide 16 by negative 8. That gives us a negative 2. a to the 4th minus a to the 3rd gives us just a to the 1st power, right? And we don't even need to write that little 1 there. And this b to the 7th minus b to the 9th, well, that's going to put us into the negatives. We're going to have a negative 2 for b, for b's exponent. And that means it's a fraction, right? Because it's a negative. So that means we have negative 2a over b squared, because that's 1 over b squared, isn't it? See? Let's look at this one. This one's also very involved. We have to divide 14 by 4, we have to subtract 4, take away 5, and we have to subtract 7 minus a negative 5. So we have 14 divided by 4 times a to the 4 minus 5 and b to the 7 minus a negative 5. That's going to simplify as 7 halves, and now this is going to be a negative 1, isn't it, for the a? And that is going to add the opposite, so we're going to have a b to the 12th. Well, this is a fraction because it's a negative, so we have 1 over a. That's going to give us 7b12 over 2a. See? Because we can write this over a 1, right? See? 7 times 1 is 7, and we have the b12 as the numerator, and we have 2a as the denominator. See? Here's another one that's pretty involved. We've got 8x5a divided by 2x3a. We have to divide the 18 by the 2, and we have to subtract the 3a from the 5a, don't we? So we get 18 divided by 2 is 9x, 5a minus 3a, and that's going to give us 9x to the 2a power. See that? Now, whole number exponents, let's see if I can get up here with my arm, whole number exponents tell us how many times to multiply a number to itself. Not by itself. By itself means it's alone. So if you ever see this written, or you need to write it, make sure you write that it's multiply it to itself, okay? If you write by itself, then it's wrong, okay? And I also want you to remember that when we have 0 to the negative 1, or 0 to the 0 power, or negative 0, which is silly because there's no negative 0 to the 0, these are undefined, and remember, Division by 0 is undefined, so we can't have 0 over 0, okay? Well, it would just be 0, wouldn't it? But we can't subtract like we did here, okay? So our next video is 1.8b. I'm going to talk about raising a power to a power. And, like always, like every time at the end of my videos, I tell you I've got all these links in my description of my video that might help you, okay? And... We're going to continue on talking about the power rules of exponents, and I'll see you next video, and I hope you're having a great day. Bye.